In this lesson, we're going to be looping, looking at loops. And loops actually do a combination of quite a bit of what we've learned in the previous lessons. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. So let's say, for instance, we want to output console and we want to have new number. And let's give uh, this new number a value of A. And let's set a variable a equals 1. So now when we go out to our code, we see we've got new number a. And then we want it to increment a, and we want it to output that again. So we see new number 2, and we want to do this multiple times. So we can do it within this type of format, but of course it's going to take a lot of lines of code and it gets kind of ugly. Uh, so let's, uh, let's create a loop. And loops are a great way to run multiple lines of code. And especially if we think got things like arrays, we can loop through all the different items in the arrays and so on. Uh, so loops require a condition. So loops, we can set up a loop like this. And I'll get rid of all of this excess here. And the condition for this loop is going to be that we're going to loop while a is less than 10. So let's check out what happens now within this loop. So we see that we start out with a value of a equals 1. We loop through all the numbers until a actually hits 10. And then it breaks the loop because we're no longer valid and it comes back false, this condition. So we go all the way up to 9 and then the next uh, loop through so we increment a there and next time we look at a it's 10 so 10 is less than 10 no it's not false breaks the loop and this is important to remember that you need to have a way to break out of the loop you don't want to have a loop that continuously goes and loops itself because uh, that would not be efficient and not be a good way to go uh, so we also have do's so we can do something where uh, we've got a do loop now do's are fairly similar to while loops. Uh, so above we did a while loop. So do loop does pretty much the same thing except it's got the while at the end. So the while condition that we're waiting to match is going to be down here. And now a of course is going to have a larger number so let's do while a is less than 10. Go back out and refresh it. So now we've doing the do loop. So it looks the same, we're continuously incrementing that number for A. Uh, and again, depending on the scenario, uh, you could use either one to do the loops. Now, one of my personal favorites is the for loop. And this is probably the one I use the most often. Occasionally I use the while loop, and very rarely do I use the do while loop. Uh, so this is the one that's the most self-contained and I think the most neatest uh, formatted. Uh, so this one is set up for loop. Output is similar where we've got these curly brackets and we've got the built-in method here. And then here we need to set some parameters. So we're going to take the value of a, we're going to equal it to 1, and we're going to do the loop while a is less than 10. And then lastly, remember again, we need to have some kind of increment, something happening. We need the value of a constantly changing so that we can have a way to get out of our loop. Uh, and that's where that increment comes into play. So overall, the format is generally the same. You need all three of these parameters for any one of the loops that you do, and they're just placed in different spots, and they're all doing the same thing. And we see that once we hit that for loop, we're outputting the same thing as we did in the while loop. Uh, we've got the value of A that we start with, and then we're looping through all of those values. Now this is very useful if we want to output values of an array. So let's create an array, set up a bunch of values in there. Uh, so let's just do one. And I'm just going to put some defaults in here. So now we've got an array. We've essentially got set uh, We've got seven items in there, and remember again with the, how to get the value of uh, the length of the array. So we could do console log, and then we do my, and we have the option to get the length, so we can do the length. 
And this is an important part uh, to remember here, uh, that we can actually get the length of the array. So we know there's seven items in the array. We know the index starts with zero. So how do we think that we could loop through and output all of the items that are contained within the array? So we'd have to start, uh, just use a different variable there. So we're gonna start x at zero. We're gonna do x while it's less than the length of the my array, and then we're gonna increment x and array index. And here, we'll just change that to x. Or maybe we'll do it kind of neatly here where we'll do this, this value like that, and then we'll write the value there. So now uh, we've got our array. We know that x is incrementing, so we can use x within that index value, and let's see what happens now. So now when we see we're outputting it, we've got array index zero is equal to one, two, three, four, all the way to seven. So index item is uh, six is equal to seven there. So I know it's a little deceiving because I've got zero, one, one, two, two, three, but uh, essentially this is what's contained within the array. So maybe uh, it might make more sense to start out with a zero. And uh, see now that we made it dynamic, so it's important to note as well that uh, since the length is dynamic here, uh, it doesn't matter if we add or remove items from the array and we can go back to all those amazing array methods and really work with the content within this array. Uh, and we can see how we can output that content and utilize it within our JavaScript. Uh, so over here, we're dynamically changing the values depending on the length uh, so we can add in any number of items here within the array. Automatically, we're updating our loop here and able to loop through the different values. And then it's just dynamically outputting that information. So even though I've added in zero, it doesn't affect the output or the running of the script. And essentially, it gives us all of that flexibility that we need in order to create some dynamic code and make amazing things happen with our code using JavaScript. So now that we've gone over all of the fundamental core concepts, it is important to take that source code from the previous lessons, try it out for yourself, and see what you can make happen with JavaScript.